batters are striking out while getting hit in the face. The most controversial jerseys in sports history are literally breaking on the field. The Players Union is revolting against MLB and the pitch clock because pitchers' arms are also breaking on the field. While this team is breaking their city's heart by literally moving to another city and according to some fans, demoting players just because they wore this wristband. The biggest star in the league has already been accused of gambling, lying and tricking a fan into giving him this ball, lying to the media to get the Dodgers to pay him the largest contract in North American sports history, and even breaking federal laws. The 2024 MLB season seems to be breaking everyone, but nothing is more broken than the Chicago White Sox, who legitimately might be the worst team in baseball history. At least that's what their record said after one month of play. They were on pace to lose 140 games. The record for most losses is 134. Their last in batting average, last in on base percentage, last in slugging percentage, have scored the least amount of runs, had the least amount of homers, and have the least amount of hits. Last year, the worst qualified hitter in the league had an OPS of 582. The White Sox, as a team, have an OPS of 592, meaning the White Sox lineup is essentially having nine of the worst hitters in the league all on the same team. On April 22nd, nearly a month into the season, they had been shut out in 36% of the games they played. That's eight of their first 22 games. The first team in baseball history to do that. After their first 25 games, they had a negative 85 run differential, nearly 30 runs worse than the second worst run differential. It got so bad, the Reds came to Chicago and scored 27 runs in one series, meaning the Reds scored more runs at the White Sox Stadium than the White Sox themselves had scored there the entire year. Then the impossible happened. The Rays came to town and they shocked them with a solid 9-4 win. The next day, the Rays punched back, taking a 3-0 lead. The White Sox didn't quit and came right back. It was tied going into extras, but the Rays thought they had the White Sox beat after scoring a run. When everybody doubted them, this happened. The amazing comeback win sprung them into the next day where they silenced the Rays again, completing a three-game sweep. Unfortunately, after this, they're still on pace to have the worst record since the 1899 Cleveland Spiders, who were so bad, they averaged 199 fans per game. They were so bad, the league forced them to play their home games at away stadiums because nobody came to see them play. And that's also what the league made the Padres do to start the 2024 season. They had to face the most expensive team of all time, headlined by Shohei Otani, whose season really began in December 2023, when everyone was waiting to see where Shohei Otani was going to sign. On December 6th, a report surfaced that Otani was set to make his final decision within the next week. The internet went crazy and started digging. Two days later, on December 8th, Fans found a private flight going from Southern California to Toronto. Supposed footage of Otani entering an airport with his agent and interpreter spread online. December 8th also just so happens to be Badai Day in Japan, a day that is recognized as a day of good luck. When he signed with the Angels in 2017, he did it on December 8th. Fans did more digging and found that Blue Jays pitcher Yusei Kikuchi, who went to the same high school as Otani, had reserved an entire sushi restaurant in Toronto. Could this be reserved for a celebration? The baseball world was anxiously waiting to see if this plane was actually Otani, and around 4 o'clock Eastern, baseball writer John Morosi confirmed through multiple sources that this was Otani on his way to Toronto. All signs pointed that this was a done deal. Otani was a Blue Jay. Then an hour later, it was discovered. Otani 
was still in Los Angeles. Whoever told John Morosi that Otani was going to Toronto may have made him a ton of money. Seeing all these reports online, the Dodgers felt like they had to make an offer that Otani couldn't refuse to prevent him from going to Toronto, and that's what they did. A day later, he signed a 10-year, $700 million contract to play for the Dodgers. Some people speculate that Otani's team leaked all this info themselves to add pressure on the Dodgers to offer Otani more money, and in the process, crushed the dreams of Blue Jays fans everywhere. A few weeks later, they made Japanese pitcher Yoshinobu Yamamoto the highest paid pitcher in baseball history. With two of the biggest Asian stars on one team facing a team with Korean-born star Ha Sum Kim, MLB's opening series in Korea was mayhem. Fans dressed up as Otani, Yamamoto, and even Otani's dog to show their support. Things were so hectic that there was even a bomb threat at the stadium before the game. Police decided it was safe to play anyway. A few hours later, things got even weirder. Their new $400 million pitcher, Yamamoto, pitched terribly and couldn't even get out of the first inning. Otani played well, but was shaken with news that his interpreter had stolen $16 million from his bank account to pay off illegal gambling debts. His best friend and interpreter was fired for this and soon after arrested. This controversy looked like it could be affecting Otani. He got off to the worst start of his career over the first eight games of the season where he hadn't hit a single home run yet against the Giants that all changed Otani hit his first ever homer as a Dodgers caught by this lucky fan Dodgers security quickly swarmed her trying to get the ball after the game Otani said he was able to meet her and exchange some gifts to get the ball back the fan quickly came out to say that wasn't the case. According to her and her husband, the Dodgers aggressively negotiated with her, pushing her to give up the ball in exchange for two signed hats, a signed bat, and a signed ball. In total, this is estimated to be worth around five grand. The Otani ball she caught was estimated to be worth over a hundred thousand dollars. She said the Dodgers said they wouldn't be able to authenticate it if she kept it, hurting its value tremendously, and told her meeting Otani would be impossible. Fans everywhere accused the Dodgers of ripping off and misleading the fan, and accused Otani of lying about meeting the fan. However, according to Japanese speakers, Otani was mistranslated and never actually said he met them. The next day, he hit another homer. A week later, he made up with the fan, gave them more autographs, and met them in real life. Because of his good karma, he continued hitting homers. He hit seven in the next three weeks. He went to Toronto and got booed by the fans who felt he deceived them, and then immediately hit another homer. Stuck at DH, unable to pitch or play the field because of injury, it seemed impossible for Otani to ever win MVP. Yet somehow, as of today, he has the second highest war in the league, even without playing defense. Otani has 2.7 war. That's the most war by a DH by May 7th in history. The closest was Manny Ramirez. He had two war. If he keeps this up, Otani could be the first designated hitter in history to win an MVP. But not every player has had such a great start to their season. Eight days after opening Korea, the season kicked off in America, where the Cubs put on one of the worst pyrotechnic shows in the history of sports. Then, in New York, the Mets, already losing, were not happy when Reese Hoskins made this slide. And Jeff McNeil was very unhappy. He screamed at Hoskins and stuck a finger in his face. The two started chirping. McNeil called Hoskins the dirtiest player he's ever seen, and Hoskins just kept calling him a crybaby. The Mets argued that Hoskins has a history of dirty slides, referring to these old plays. But according to the rules, all of these seem completely legal. In the second day of the season, we already had our first beat. And the very next day, Hoskins responded by hitting an RBI single, another single, as well as a two-run bomb to rub it in the Mets' face. Upset, the Mets responded by throwing a pitch behind his head. 
causing the benches to clear, Hoskins to get upset, and a three-game suspension for the pitcher. The Mets got even more embarrassed as they went on to lose their first five games. However, things have turned around and currently sit in third in the NL East behind the two juggernauts, the Phillies and the Braves. While the Brewers have been even more surprising, projected to finish third, they have the best record in the NL Central, right ahead of the Cubs a team that made some pretty big noise this offseason by re-signing former MVP and Scott Boris client Cody Bellinger. Unfortunately for them, he got injured in April. Boris's other client, J.D. Martinez, also started the year injured. And three weeks into the season, after having an ERA over 11, Boris's most prized client, Blake Snell, also got injured. This seemed like terrible luck for Boris during a season that keeps getting worse for him and his client, but this injury trend has continued everywhere and people can't figure out why. Yuri Perez, Rookie of the Year finalist last season, got injured and needs Tommy John. Shane Bieber, former Cy Young winner, got injured and needs Tommy John. Spencer Strider, favorite to win the Cy Young this year, got injured and needs Tommy John. And all three of these injuries happened within 48 hours. In total, 92 pro players have gotten Tommy John in the past year alone. Some MLB's biggest stars, Jacob deGrom, Max Scherzer, and Garrett Cole, haven't thrown a single pitch this season. If you take the 10 hardest throwing pitchers of 2023, eight of them have been on the injured list in April. The entire baseball world was scrambling to figure out why this problem is becoming so huge. Many people blame velocity. Unlike in the past, today's pitchers are taught to throw as hard as they can on every single pitch they throw in a game, which presumably adds more stress on the arm. The number of major league pitches clocked at 100 miles per hour or faster has more than tripled in just three years. Batters in MLB hit 191 on fastballs 100 miles per hour or more. On fastballs 95 miles per hour or less, they hit 281, almost an 100 point difference. Throwing harder without a doubt makes you harder to hit. There's no way pitchers are gonna stop throwing hard even if it does increase their injury risk. But many people aren't blaming velocity. The Players Association is blaming the league and the pitch clock for the increase in injuries. Saying MLB ignored the players who unanimously opposed the pitch clock. Their concern is that less time in between pitches means pitchers have less time to recover, therefore get injured more, and blamed MLB for not caring about players' health. MLB obviously disagrees, saying that there is no meaningful increase in injuries during the first year of the pitch clock last season. This is true, however, some think this is going to change as injuries in the minor leagues have exploded since they originally implemented the pitch clock in 2018. In reality, nobody knows for sure what's really to blame for these injuries. But out of all the pitchers who appeared in a single game in 2022, 49% of them had to go on the injured list at some point. The injury epidemic has become a serious issue for MLB, but in some rare cases, injuries have actually saved players careers. But before we get to that, a quick word from today's sponsor. There's no better summer activity on earth than seeing a live baseball game, but finding tickets for you and your friends isn't always easy. Apps usually have crazy fees, charge you too much, and sometimes the tickets never end up even getting to you. And that is why I always use game time for the past year or so i've switched exclusively to game time for tickets whether i'm going to a game concert or even a play they have tickets for everything they offer insane last minute deals so the closer you are to the event the cheaper the tickets will end up being you can see the view from your seat on the app so you won't be surprised by a giant pole in your way and even have a lowest ticket guarantee so you are guaranteed to get the best deal. Their last minute deals, flash deals, and zone deals can honestly result in some of the biggest bargains you'll ever see when it comes to tickets. And now they are even cheaper if you use code BDE. Just download the app, use code BDE, and get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code BDE to get $20 off. Do it right now. Ronald Blanco's first week of the season might have been the best week of any human in history. Ronald Blanco didn't start pitching until he was 18 years old. Most players out of the Dominican Republic sign when they're 16 years old. He worked at a car wash 
until he was 22. That's when he finally signed a contract with the Astros for $5,000. It took him seven years, but he finally defined the odds last season and got called up as a starter for the first time at 28 years old. He made several starts, but was quickly demoted. However, this spring, he caught a massive break. Justin Verlander and Jose Urquidy got injured, meaning Blanco all of a sudden had a chance to make the starting rotation out of spring training. At 30 years old, he knew this could likely be his last opportunity. He dominated all the way up to his last outing where he was scheduled to pitch on the same day his wife was due to have their second child. Even though this was just a spring training game, Blanco watched his daughter be born, then rushed to the stadium in order to make his start a few hours later. He then proceeded to strike out 10 batters in only 4 innings. The Astros were so impressed, they told him he made the opening day roster on the mound as they were taking him out of the game. This was his reaction. Within a few hours of his daughter being born, he made his first opening day roster, and a week later, he made his first start. Blanco, who's never thrown a complete game in his entire professional career, proceeded to throw a no-hitter. He has been the Astros' best pitcher all year, and if it wasn't for Verlander and Akiti going down, Blanco wouldn't even be on the roster. The rest of the Astros, however, have been terrible. Their pitching staff is torched. Verlander, Urquidy, Framber Valdez, Christian Javier, and Luis Garcia have all spent time on the IL this year. Their veteran first baseman, Jose Abreu, is back in the minors because he started so bad. This is a team who's made it to the American League Championship seven years in a row. They started this season 7-19. and 19. Only one team in Major League history has made the playoffs after starting 7-19 and 19 or worse, and that was in 1914. They entered the season with an 86% chance to make the playoffs. Now, they have a 44% chance to make the playoffs and are in last place. And yes, that means the Houston Astros have a worse record than the Oakland Athletics. A team that last year was on pace to have the worst run differential in baseball history. This time last year, they were last in the league in at least 12 categories, and their starting pitchers hadn't recorded a single win. The franchise has essentially been trying to lose games on purpose and move the team to Las Vegas for several years. One of the only positives the team had last year was Estuary Ruiz, who led the American League with 67 steals. This season, he got off to a hot start. In the first series, he had an OPS over 1,200. Then, the Athletics immediately demoted him, replacing him with a player who had a terrible career OPS of 611. Many consider Ruiz to be the A's most promising young player, so fans across baseball were shocked by this news. Rumors began swirling that the A's demoted him just because he wore this wristband. Brett Rooker, their most productive hitter, got benched that weekend. There was also a picture of him wearing this wristband. Christian Patre was traded by the A's last spring. He also wore this wristband. James Caprillion wore this wristband and got cut by the team. Tony Kemp also wore this wristband and this offseason the Athletics let him walk in free agency. These wristbands were all made by The Last Dive Bar, a fan-run organization that has fallen out of favor with the team because they are actively trying to fight against the team's ownership. They helped organize the infamous reverse protest night last season and are to blame for many of the disrespectful signs seen throughout the Oakland Coliseum every night. The Athletics don't like this organization, so people speculated that the A's were getting rid of any player who showed any support to the last dive bar whatsoever. In all likelihood, these wristbands probably had nothing to do with any of these players being benched or sent down. But the A's have been so dysfunctional, people actually bought this theory. The team announced in April they will play their games at a minor league stadium in Sacramento next season. They will no longer be called the Oakland Athletics, they're just going to call them the Athletics and hope to move to Vegas when the stadium is done being built.
built in three years. Stadium workers in Oakland are going to be out of jobs and reportedly weren't even told about this plan. Stadium workers have also been warned that if they talk about this publicly, they could be fired. The team's store employees have been told to try to sell less merch that says Oakland on it. Fans are already planning another reverse protest for June. Nobody is coming to the games. The team is so desperate for attendance, they offered a deal where you could go to 45 athletic games for only $99. That's $2.20 per game. The A's say they sent Estuary Ruiz to the minors so he could work on getting on base more, striking out less, and hit the ball harder. He came back two weeks later from his demotion and immediately hit a ball. He's continued to produce and the A's out of nowhere got hot, went on a six game win streak to get the team to 500. They've had the lowest payroll in the league for two years in a row. It's an insane $20 million less than the second lowest payroll. Shohei Otani alone is getting paid more than and every single player on the A's roster combined. The franchise is actively trying to lose and move, yet they only find themselves two and a half games back of first place. In large part due to Mason Miller, who out of nowhere leads closers in war, strikeouts, whip, and has struck out 53.7% of the batters he's faced. That's more than any other pitcher in baseball. He's thrown 97 pitches over 100 miles per hour. That's more than any major leaguer. In fact, the only pitcher who has thrown more pitches over 100 miles per hour this year is still in the minor leagues. That is Paul Skeens, and he might be the best pitcher in baseball. Right now, he's on the Indianapolis Indians, and everyone is curious on how he isn't in the major leagues. He's six foot six, 235 pounds, throws 102 miles per hour. He's striking out over 14 batters per nine innings, has an ERA under one. Batters are hitting 175 against him. Every time he pitches, tabloids report on it and refer to him as Livy Dunn's boyfriend because of his celebrity girlfriend, but soon he might be a household name himself. The Pirates are finally letting him throw more than three innings at a time, and even though he was only drafted a year ago, he's likely coming up within a few months. However, even as dominant as Skeens has been, he's still not even considered the best prospect in baseball. That's Jackson Holiday. He already got called up in April and absolutely sucked. Holiday is only 20. He didn't graduate high school until 2022. He wasn't supposed to be in MLB until 2025 at the earliest, but dominated rookie ball, dominated single A, got called up to double A, dominated, went to triple A, went off, earned himself an invitation to spring training this season and dominated. He had so much hype. One of his baseball cards sold for $50,000 before he played a single game in MLB. The Orioles started him out in the minor leagues this season and people were outraged. He dominated every level. So people thought this was just the Orioles manipulating his service time. But he hit so well in AAA for two weeks, the Orioles had no choice but to call him up. And it went terribly. It took him four games to get his first hit. He started off one for 30 and has struck out in 50% of his plate appearances. So far in his first 10 games, he only has two hits and 16 strikeouts. There is only one other player in baseball history to do that. After two weeks, the Orioles decided the number one prospect in baseball wasn't ready and sent him back down to the minors. There have been a ton of amazing players and Hall of Famers who got off to equally terrible starts. And Jackson Holiday and Paul Skeens will be back in the major leagues soon enough. But by the time they are called up, there could be completely new jerseys. Yes, because Nike and Fanatics have finally admitted that these were a problem. People collectively lost their minds when MLB and Nike debuted their new jerseys this spring training. The lettering on the back of the jerseys was noticeably smaller. During picture day, the pants seemed to be see-through and multiple viral pictures of players' junk spread online. The season started and players were literally sweating through their jerseys. Riley Green slid at home and ripped a massive hole in his pants and that has since happened to multiple players during games. To make things worse, some teams 
don't even have their uniforms yet. The Cardinals have not been able to wear these uniforms because they're not arriving until June. The Giants won't get these jerseys until sometime in May. Player after player have come out criticizing the uniforms, saying they're worse than the old ones, that they look like they're from TJ Maxx, saying the pants don't fit, and the players union has even put in a formal complaint to the league to make changes to them as soon as possible. And finally, MLB announced those changes are coming. Even though many fans blame fanatics because they're the ones who make them in their factory, Nike is the one who tells them how to make it and sends them the materials. So according to MLB, this was entirely Nike's fault. And Nike has finally said they're gonna make changes. By the start of the 2025 season, they're gonna make the lettering bigger again. Players are gonna be allowed to custom tailor the pants again. They will have higher seam stitch counts to avoid ripping, a new color slash material to avoid sweat stains, and even a higher quality zipper. And now everyone in baseball can be happy again.